All right, so luckily we were able to snag a spot and uh, we're out here right next to Stanley Lake, right outside of Stanley, Idaho. Beautiful area. We got her just in time before the sunset. And before we waste any more time, we are going to go down to the lake and fill up our big jug of water and uh, get situated here. We're here at the beautiful Stanley Lake. Check it out. A little smoky from all the wildfires, but it's still beautiful. How's the water? It's chilly, but it's really refreshing. Oh, it's so clear. It's so Look clear. Look how pretty it is. Wow. <laughs> this doesn't look that bad, though. It does not look bad at all. Good thing we got the Sawyer squeeze. <laughs> Can't wait to, we could probably make it around this tomorrow in a couple hours. I think we can. This is a pretty small lake. It's so pretty though. <sighs> I just bummed all this smoke is happening, but it's okay. Let's get back to the campsite. Mm, mm, mm. Nicole is preparing our sausage. <laughs> yes, of course, with veggies. And I got the funnel going into the Sawyer squeeze here. Uh, Sawyer squeeze pouch, which we will then filter. We got a good old-fashioned party next to us, which we don't mind at all. The more noise, the better. That means the less wildlife. We got a pretty, pretty sweet spot here. We didn't even have to pay. We just, uh, we got lucky though. We, we went through like four or five different campgrounds, and they were completely full. But that's what you get on a Saturday night, late summer. Everybody's out here doing the same thing we want to do: enjoy nature. This is great, actually. Um, our neighbors are just partying. And it makes us feel a little more comfortable because the more noise, the less chance of wildlife coming by. After our first overnight on the Squirrel Creek Trail in the San Isabel Forest in Colorado, we appreciate some loud, noisy neighbors. I'll tell you what. So while Nicole is preparing food for us, which looks amazing, I'm gonna make my fucking ass useful and uh, blow up these sleeping pads. Thank you for pumping those up. Oh yeah, thank you for cooking. So these REI Kingdom sleeping pads are actually really nice. And you don't need an air pump. You just need a little bit of elbow grease. And once you get in the groove, it takes about five minutes to get them up. With these self-inflate sleeping pads, it's a lot easier on perfectly flat ground. Oh yeah. Goes by much faster if you got something flat to pump on. Alright, that's one down. So even though I do a lot more of the muscle work, Nicole and I are a team and she's a much better cook than I am. So it works out. I know she's just cooking us a dank ass fucking meal right now. That's dank as dope. That's, That's dank, dank as dope. dope. But yeah, these REI Kingdom sleeping pads are really nice. We have the extra large size for extra comfort. And I will leave you a link below in the description if you want to pick one up for yourself. Those affiliate links in the description below cost you nothing extra and of no extra effort to you. And it would really help us out. So consider it. All right, that's two down. They're really nice, and once you get it down, it really doesn't take you any longer than 10 minutes. Flat ground is preferred, but we have these pieces of cardboard, some extra cardboard in our car for starting fires, but a flat surface definitely helps you inflate these better. Because the way it works is you press down on the cushion. This is normally open when you're inflating. You press down on the cushion, and then air gets sucked back into there, because this is a big, it's a big cushion in there, so the cushion needs to pull air back in so you can pump it again. And if this is on uneven ground, it's really hard for air to get sucked back into this cushion inside of here. So you heard it here on the void fill. A little thing, a piece of cardboard will go a long way in pumping these things up. They're not gonna tell you that at a retail store. Oh boy, Nicole is whipping us up something good. Oh yeah, it's gonna be so good. We got this awesome multi spice thing. Unfortunately, we supported Walmart. It's really awesome. I mentioned it in a previous video when we were at Spruce Knob in the Monongahela National Forest in West Virginia. But we got salt, black pepper, garlic salt, cayenne, curry, 
and paprika. And we try to do a combination of all of them with each meal so we're not just left with, you know, only paprika and cayenne. We wanted to do a shout out for our great friend Cindy back in Chicago. She's one of our best friends. She's great. Sweet person. Very talented. sweet and talented. Happy birthday, Cindy. Thanks. Just for you, we're going to link some of your art in the description below. Oh yeah, baby. Because we love you. <laughs> Happy birthday, Cindy. Show this to Cody. Fuck White Claw. <laughs> so we came into town to get some cell service to download an audio book for the night and we came across this party. Like a doodle do. Like a cocoon. Nicole's in her cocoon in there. All right, we got the campsite cleaned up. We're gonna go for a hike around Stanley Lake. Another little thing, it's courteous to leave um, the fire pit at your campsite ready to go for the next camper. So I just made a little, little teepee of wood and uh, hopefully the fire restrictions go away somewhat soon and somebody can enjoy that fire. When we arrived to our campsite, I saw this, which inspired me to do it. And I remember seeing a picture on Reddit, I think it was uh, the subreddit camping and hiking or something like that. But I guess it's an old tradition that's almost all but forgotten. Cole and I are taking a nice hike around Stanley Lake and I'm breaking in my new shoes. They're so nice. Look at these bad boys. Oh, Ooh. hiking in style. I got blue and orange. <laughs> And this is nice and peaceful. It's the morning before too many people are here. Very beautiful out here. The water is very clear. I wonder what kind of fish are in here. Well, that was a short hike going, <laughs> going counterclockwise around the lake. It's uh, really flooded right now, but we're gonna go the other way and see how far we can get. Stanley Lake. It's hazy because of the wildfire smoke, but that looks pretty cool. I wonder what mountain peak that is. But this water is incredibly clear. You can see the bottom there. That's about, I'd say that's about five feet deep right there. So according to that sign, there are sockeye, salmon, and trout in this lake. So Stanley Lake, elevation 6,513 feet, is named for Captain John Stanley, whose prospector party first discovered gold here near 1863. And that big peak right there, McGowan Peak, elevation 9,860 feet, is named for the McGowan brothers who drove cattle in the area during the turn of the century. So Lake Stanley, and of course the town of Stanley is named after Captain Stanley who found gold near here in 1863. In the middle of the Civil War, Captain Stanley was out here mining for gold. He's like, no thank you. I'm gonna go find gold instead. You guys have your war. So a lot of people bring their kayaks and paddle boards out here. How can't you? It's amazing out here. So we just met a lovely couple who was camping right here on Stanley Lake, and they gave us some great advice on some other awesome places to see in idaho oh boy oh <laughs> the chipmunks are small around here is that a chipmunk or a shrew 
Oh, that <laughs> rodent his, is not happy with us. I kicked, I kicked his little pine cone. He got pissed. <laughs> hey, that's my pine cone. <laughs> Thank you to the couple camping on Stanley Lake. Now these are some nice bridges. These are some nice bridges. I appreciate a good bridge. Yeah, we do. So we didn't realize it was already noon. We're trying to get to Wyoming and set up camp. So unfortunately, we're not gonna make it all the way around Stanley Lake. However, we are gonna go check out Redfish Lake, which is where we thought we were originally gonna be camped up at. So Stanley Lake was kind of a fail. We had planned on walking all the way around the lake, but not only was part of the trail flooded, we also didn't realize what time it was and we we're trying to get out to get to Wyoming to pitch a tent near the Grand Tetons. Then we tried to go to Redfish Lake <laughs> to get some awesome footage and it was so crowded get some awesome footage and, and video but um not only was it crowded with so many people it was so smoky like right here this, this is a beautiful we just passed a beautiful scenic overlook it's nothing it's but great. you can't see shit because it's all smoky this video was kind of a fail but sorry a, guys sorry but we are going to hit up the grand tetons next and then yellowstone so see you in the tetons